uh, and comforted during everything that's going on right now. Um, and God, I, I pray that as we, as we get into the message this morning, I pray that as we look into your word, that we are led to have hearts of thanksgiving. God, I pray that we have hearts of gratitude. Uh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you speak powerfully, pray that your word speaks powerfully, uh, and that the end result, God, is your praise. God, I pray that you're glorified and that you feel loved. Um, and Father, I pray that we walk away feeling grateful for you. But Father, we love you so much. Lift up all these things in your son's name. Amen. So you guys can go ahead and turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 1. That's where we'll be this morning. And I want to be talking a little bit about Thanksgiving as it is coming up in a few days. And I think God would have it that today be the day that I preach on Thanksgiving, or about Thanksgiving, because uh, Dylan is two years old today, and it's crazy, yeah, woohoo, he's two, yes, and he is already showing it in a lot of ways, but good ways and, you know, hard ways too, but lots of good, it's so cute to see him, you know, see his brain start to develop, and he's imitating us, he's repeating us, he's doing more stuff, he's getting into more stuff, and, um, you know, throwing more tantrums, but, but uh, it's, it's been really, really cool to see him grow and develop over the past two years, and I think to myself, wow, like, we're here, you know, and he's two, I mean, you know, it's not like we've arrived at this grand conclusion or anything, hopefully not, but, you know, I think it's, it's crazy to think about how fast it goes by. Um, it feels like yesterday, you know, I cut his umbilical cord, and, you know, we were taking him home from the hospital, and now he's, like, walking, and talking, and, you know, he's counting, and just doing all these things, and I'm like, oh, gosh, it's, it just goes by so quickly. And one of the things that, you know, I, I, I've been realizing as I was working on the sermon, and you know, just reflecting over the last two years is, I, I feel like there are a lot of things that I wasn't necessarily fully thankful for, you know, in the past two years. Or it, it could be really easy for me to look at the challenging things of being a parent. You know, having a newborn and it's like, okay, no sleep. That's a given. Um, but also just how, how much it changes your life. You know, going from not having a kid to having a kid your life is just not the same. And I think I felt that in a lot of ways over the last two years. And, and I, you know, I, I was grateful that I have a son. I'm still grateful I have a son. I'm, I'm grateful that, that God blessed me with that. But I think it, it became really easy for me not to have a heart of thanksgiving and instead to have a heart of, I don't know, complaining. You know, and so I, I felt challenged as I looked at this story with Hannah this morning. I felt challenged as I reflected over the last two years of Dylan's life, and I was like, man, how many moments, you know, where I was complaining did I miss out on being grateful for something? You know, or, or how many times did I miss an opportunity to give God thanks uh, because I was complaining about lack of sleep or complaining because I couldn't do something because I have to be with my kid or, you know, fill in the blank. And so I, I felt convicted and I felt challenged, and, and I, I kind of want to share about that this morning and look at the story here with Hannah and just kind of what her experience was. And the title of my message this morning is A Heart of Thanksgiving. And I, I feel like in Hannah, we get a pretty great example of how to have a heart of thanksgiving. Um, and hopefully that will be made clear here as we, as we get into it this morning. So let's start reading here. 1 Samuel chapter 1, and verse 1. It says, There was a certain man from Ramathaim, a Zophite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jer Jeroam, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zufu, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other Panina. Panina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrificed to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Panina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. And the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. 
Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my Lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife, Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. Right, and so here we have this crazy situation, crazy story. Hannah, who, you know, is, is a married woman, and uh, she, she can't have kids. You know, it doesn't say why God closed her womb or why God prevented her from being able to have kids, but she wasn't able to. And it was something that brought her a lot of trouble and sorrow and anguish. And I, I think especially in this culture, right, where your kids were kind of like the, the having sons was like the crowning glory right, of your family, Um, a father having many sons, and Hannah felt sorrow. She felt anguish and troubled that she's like, I I can't, I can't give my husband a son. It broke her heart. And not only was that the case, there was another wife named Panina who was kind of a jerk to Hannah. I don't know why she felt the need to irritate Hannah or to provoke her or make fun of her for not being able to have a kid, but that was something that she did year after year. Every year, she had to face her husband's other wife. And not only was this other wife, Panina, making fun of Hannah or irritating Hannah, she also had kids. She had several kids. And so you can probably imagine the heartache, the hardship, the hurt and the anguish that Hannah felt. And so she goes to the temple, she prays, she bears her soul to God. She says, God, I am in anguish. It says she wept bitterly before the Lord, and she begged God to remember her. Eli thinks that she's drunk, kind of messed up, but she's not drunk, she's just bearing her soul to the Lord. She explains herself, Eli says, May the Lord grant you what you've asked. And he does. He remembers her. And she gets to have a kid. And I have two simple things this morning that I want to focus on in Hannah's character that I think will help us to have a heart of thanksgiving this holiday season. But not just this holiday season, but every day. Two things that I think will will really enable us to truly be grateful for who God is and what he's done. And the first thing is this, is that we have to be aware that God remembers us. And I th- you know, that's the thing that, that Hannah begged for. She said, God, don't forget about me. God, please remember your servant. Look, look on my anguish, look on my sorrow, look on my heartache, and remember me. And, and, and this, is, you know, this is someone who has grown up hearing about God. Right, and, and all the things that he'd done for, for the Israelites, you know, the, the Genesis story, the, the story of, of, the, of the Israelites coming out of Egypt, and, and all these things that had happened prior to this point. And she remembered, God, 
you remembered all these people, right? So she's familiar with who God is. She's familiar that she worships a God who remembers her pe- his people. And that's her prayer. It's like, God, don't forget about me. She feels forgotten because she can't have kids. She feels forgotten because her circumstances are hard. They're challenging. They're troubling. And she begs God, remember me. God hears her prayer. And he remembers her. And she's able to give birth to a son. I think for us to have a heart of thanksgiving, we have to remember that God remembers us. He does not forget us. We serve a God who remembers his people. We serve a God that hears our cry. When we cry out in anguish, when we're going through hard times, when we experience suffering and hardship of any kind, God remembers us. We are always on his mind. How do you be thankful in the midst of troubling circumstances? Is it not to remember that, okay, my life may be challenging and difficult right now, but I know that God remembers me. I know that my God is not turning a blind eye to my suffering. It may feel like it. Perhaps there are prayers on your heart that you've been praying for years that have not been answered. Perhaps there are things going on in your life that you didn't ask for, challenging situations, difficult circumstances, troubled relationships, broken families, I don't know, insert whatever difficulty or hardship. Maybe you're going through loss. Maybe you're grieving. Whatever the case may be. It can be easy to feel like, man, God God doesn't remember me right now. God has forgotten me. But I think in Hannah, we see an incredible example of someone who, despite her circumstances, chooses to hold on to the fact that God remembers his people. And I think if we want to have that heart of thanksgiving, that's something that we have to cling to. God remembers me. God does not abandon me. I love this scripture. It's one of my favorite scriptures in Isaiah that talks about the heart of God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15 and 16. It says, A mother may forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she she has born. Though she may forget... I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Right? God, it, it's almost, it, it is impossible for him to forget his children. It's impossible for him to forget his people. That is the very nature and the very heart of the God that we serve. We are engraved on the palms of his hands. The same way that a mother is always thinking of her child. That's how God feels about us. Right? And we see that lived out in, in Hannah's example. Right? God remembers her. And I, I, I want to encourage us and challenge us, right, in, in the midst of these, these difficult times, whatever, the, whatever difficulties you may face, and perhaps you're not going through any challenges or any difficulties right now, but I assure you, you will at some point in your life I mean, that's just life. We, we have hardships, we have griefs, we have troubles in this world. But I want to challenge us, in the midst of those troubles, don't forget about the fact that God remembers you. Are you convinced that no matter what happens in your life, God remembers you? If you're going through a difficult time right now, are you convinced of this truth, that God remembers you? That you are ever on his mind. That you are written on his heart. And that he has a plan for you, right? Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope in the future. Use that scripture a lot. How much do we actually believe that? I think the answer to that question will affect your ability to be grateful in tough circumstances.
It really will. Right? If, if you have someone who, in the midst of troubling circumstances, is still grateful and rejoicing and thankful, that's probably a sign that that person knows that they are remembered by God. Right? Even though my life right now is, is, is kind of hectic or chaotic, I'm rejoicing. I'm grateful. God is still God, and he still remembers me. It shows in a person's life. But on the flip side, if you have someone who, you know, the only focus, and I, you know, I'm not saying that we can't be discouraged. Sometimes life is discouraging, right? It, that, it, it, it is what it is. Life just hands us difficult situations at times. But I, I think the person who isn't thankful, the person who forgets that God remembers them, it will show in their life as well. Self-focus, selfishness, whatever else, will become the things that characterize that individual. It really will show. You know, I remember when I was, uh, when I was in college, and I felt like God had forgotten about I felt like because of my same-sex attractions, I was just doomed. <laughs> you know, I felt like, man, God is, is not on my side. I don't know why I struggle with this. I don't know why I'm dealing with this. And I had all these desires. I was like, God, I, I, want, I want to be faithful to you, but it's hard. It's like, I don't know where this is coming from, but it's not easy to deal with. And then on top of that, you know, I've been praying, I've been begging God. This is kind of a trivial example, right? This isn't like end of the world, super deep stuff. But it, it was kind of deep to me at the time as a, as a, you know, junior in college. But all of my friends started getting married. And that was my dream. I was like, ah, God, I've been faithful, you know? Like, I've, I've, been, I've been fighting, I've been repentant. Like, why can't I have this? You know, and I moved here, and they started having kids, and I was like, man, we were supposed to be in the same camp. Like, God, what, what's going on? Why have you forgotten about me? I, I think it was easy for me to feel that way. You know, it was easy for me to feel got, forgotten by God, to feel like I'm just kind of, you know, and I, I got to a place where I was able to just be like, okay, amen. If I'm, if I'm supposed to live a life of singleness, so be it, right? God is still good. But I think I was so tempted to feel like, you know what, God just forgot about me. You know, is this Davion struggling with this over here? It's like, whatever, he'll figure it out. He'll get through it. I was like, man, I, I didn't feel close to God at some points in college. I felt like, I, honestly, I felt rebellious of God in my heart. And I acted out on that rebellion a lot. Giving into impurity, you know, choosing to just turn a blind eye to who God was and what he had in store for me. It was hard for me to feel remembered by God. You know, and I, I'm sure we all have our own stories, our own circumstances, our own life situations that we have probably felt that way. But I think at the end of the day, we can never forget that God remembers us. That's, that's what's going to help us to be thankful this Thanksgiving. And not just on Thanksgiving Day when we're eating turkey and mac and cheese, watching football, collard greens, for those that eat collard greens on Thanksgiving Day, which surprisingly is not a lot of you, but amen. Maybe you'll see the light one day. <laughs> but I think remembering that, man, God never forgets us. And look, not only when things are going well, but especially when things are hard. When things are hard and out of our control and, and bleak and discouraging and difficult, remembering that God remembers us will help us to be thankful, not just on Thanksgiving, but every day. Amen? Amen. Let's keep reading here. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 21. When her husband Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, her husband, her, her husband Elkanah told her. Stay here, 
until you have weaned him. Only may the Lord make good on his word. So the woman stayed home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he, after he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli, and she said to him, Pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. The second thing I think that helps us, that we see in Hannah's character here, is we have to remember God. You know, God remembers us, but do we remember God? Hannah, when she prayed her prayer to the Lord, asking God to remember her, asking him for a son, she made a vow. She said, God, if you give me a son, if you remember me, I will devote this boy to you for the rest of his life. For all of his life, he will be devoted to you. And this is a, uh, this is a Nazarite vow, which is a vow that's specifically made in Numbers. And, you know, this was a vow that uh, someone usually made for a specific period of time where they dedicated themselves to the Lord. And what that included was a abstaining from wine, grape juice, grapes, raisins. They abstained from mourning the dead and being in the presence of dead bodies because they wanted to keep themselves pure. They didn't want to be unclean. And they never cut their hair. And that was their sign, right? Their, their long hair was a sign that they had taken on this Nazarite vow. And so usually someone would, would devote a, a certain period, maybe for you know, several months to a few years, where they, they made this vow and they committed themselves and dedicated themselves to the Lord in this special way. But Hannah took it a step further. She said, I will, I will just give him to you. If you give me a son, I will give him to you in this vow for his entire life. And, you know, when she had the kid, she, she gave birth to Samuel. She remembered God. She remembered God provided for me. I made a vow. I'm going to keep that vow. I want to fulfill that vow. And see, what's, what's cool about Hannah's heart here is you could tell that her joy, her hope, her trust, her fulfillment was not in Samuel. It wasn't in her son. She was grateful she had a son. I'm sure she was over the moon to be able to have a son. But that's not where her joy was. That's not where her gratitude was. Her gratitude was in God. She rejoiced that God remembered her. She remembered God, and she chose to give thanks to God and to rejoice in God rather than the blessing. And I think that that's the biggest key for us to have a heart of thanksgiving, is who do we rejoice in, or what do we rejoice in? When we beg God for things, when we ask him for things, when we beg him to remember us, when we're on our knees in prayer, and God answers those prayers, and God blesses us with whatever it is we request of him, even things that we don't request of him, where is your joy found? Is it in the things that he gives you, or is it in the one who provides those things? For Hannah, her joy was in God. She said, look, I'm going to fulfill my vow. I'm going to give him to the Lord. And I'm sure it was hard for her. I mean, it's her son, right? And so she, she's literally sending him to live in this temple with the priest for the rest of his life. Of course, that was hard for her. You know, she, she had him. She got to, to nurse him until he was weaned, which, you know, some people believe could be up to maybe two years old or somewhere around that time. But after that, she didn't have him anymore. He didn't live with her anymore. 
I'm sure she got to see him. You know, she'd probably go visit him. But imagine your kid, if you have kids, you know, imagine dropping your kid off and they don't live with you. Some of you are probably like, that'd be good. You know. <laughs> that'd be all right. I'd be fine with that, you know. But, but, but really, you know, it's like, man, to not have your kid with you, I think about not having Dylan with me, not seeing the milestones in his life, not, not hearing, you know, I don't know, he was two years old probably when he was named, so he probably said some words, but, you know, not seeing him develop and grow and, and mature into a young man and be a part of his life forever, like, that would, that would break my heart. That would be really, really hard for me. But for Hannah, the fact that God had given her a son was enough. And for Hannah, God was enough. She knew that, and that's why she said, I give him to the Lord. Because he came from the Lord anyway. I think that's a true heart of thanksgiving. When it comes to the things that you have in your life, is that where your joy is found? Or would you say that your joy is in God? It can be so easy for us to get wrapped up in the blessings and forget all about the one who brought them. And I, that's just the culture of our world, right? Marketing, and consumerism, and the holidays, and your Christmas lists. And I know it's not Christmas time, but, you know, a lot of us have probably started our Christmas list. I've started my Christmas list. Um, but, you know, it's like it's just really easy to get caught up in stuff and things and, you know, I want this and I want that. And then when you get those things, it's, man, it's like awesome, right? And your kids, you get them a toy and they're like, this is great. And they take it to the other room and you're like, where's my thank you, right? But I think that's just how we are as people. That's how it's just natural for us to be that way. We see what's in front of us, but we don't look at the story behind it. We don't look at what was done in order for us to receive that. We don't look at the person who gave it to us. And I think in order for us to be truly thankful, to truly have a heart of thanksgiving, we have to fight not to rejoice in the blessing, but to rejoice in the blesser. We have to rejoice in the fact that God remembers us and that God provides for us. Do you remember God this morning? Are you aware of the ways that God has been moving in your heart? Are you aware of the ways that God has provided for you? If you're not, are you trying to be aware? Are you trying to make God the source of your joy? I think we have to imitate Hannah here. Right? And, and you can tell, like I said, you can tell if, if a person is remembrant of God or not. If someone truly remembers God and remembers that everything that they have comes from God, that person won't be stingy. That person won't be selfish. That person won't be withholding. That person won't be generous. Hannah could have said, you know what? Yeah, he's my son. I know I made this vow, but I, I'm, I think I'm going to keep him. I'm going to hold on to him. You know, I, I, I know I made this vow to offer him to the Lord for, for all of his days, but I'm just, I'm just going to forget about that. But no, that's not her heart. Your joy, your fulfillment, your contentment should come from God and God alone. You know, I think of the scripture in Genesis 15, 1, when God says to Abraham, then Abram, he says, I am your shield, your very great reward. I think that's how we have to view God. That God is my reward. Even if I were to lose everything that I have in my life, God would be enough. God would be enough. I don't need anything else to be complete because I am complete with God alone. Even if everything was taken from me and I just had God, I would be good. Is that your heart this morning? If, if everything were to be taken from you, everything that you hold dear, everything that you value, would God be enough for you? The fact that you get to have a relationship with God, the fact that he remembers you and that he cares for you, would that be enough? Sadly, I feel like at times in my life, 
that's not the case. There are times in my life where I feel like, man, if everything is taken away from me, I don't know that God will be enough. I think about losing my wife or, you know, losing my kid. And, you know, I, sometimes I think about, man, would, would God really be enough for me if he took away the things that he blessed me with? Would I still give praise to the blesser? Would I still remember him? And the fact that I, I kind of question or, or feel like I can waver at times is an indicator to me that I need to fall more in love with God. I, I need to fight to get to that place where, you know what, even if I lost everything, God would be enough. I'll never forget about God. Even with the stuff that I have, I have to think about, you know what, how can I remember God? How can I take my joy from the stuff that God has given me, from the people that God has given me, and give it fully to him. That's what's going to help us to have a heart of thanksgiving. In Luke 17, Jesus tells a parable of the ten lepers. We're probably familiar with this. But I think it accurately depicts the heart of this passage. It says, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? You know, Jesus, he heals these ten lepers, and because of their disease, they had to be isolated from society. They couldn't be around people. They couldn't be around their loved ones. They couldn't be around anyone. They were outcasts, and they were looked at and treated as such. And so Jesus heals all ten of them, and they're excited, right? They're going to show themselves to the priests, and along the way, their, their skin is cleansed, and they're like, man, we're, we're, we're cleansed. We're, we're no longer bound to this defiling skin disease. We can go, and we can talk to people, and we can be normal, functioning members of society, and we can talk to our families and, you know, have dinner with people or whatever. We're not outcasts anymore. Ten of them, they just go off from that. One stops and says, hold up. This wouldn't be possible if it weren't for Jesus. So he turns back, and he goes back to Jesus, and he throws himself at Jesus' feet, and he gives praise to God in a loud voice. He wasn't trying to hide it. He's like, hey, this would not be possible, Jesus, if it weren't for you. And Jesus asked, where, where, where are the rest? And this one was a Samaritan. This is a foreigner. The rest weren't. He's like, what, what's going on here? I want to ask us this morning, which one are you? Are you one of the nine that just ran off and enjoyed the blessing? Amen. Blessings are encouraging. It's exciting to be blessed by God. But they forgot about Jesus like that. Or are you like the one who stopped dead in his tracks and remembered, this came from God. This is only because of God. That was Hannah's heart. She looked at her son and she said, he is from God. And so therefore, I'm going to remember God. And so when we think about having a heart of thanksgiving this morning, I want to give us a few challenges. A few things that we can do to help us have a heart of gratitude. A few things that we can do to imitate Hannah. To imitate that one guy who, in Jesus' parable, came back and gave praise to God. The first thing is, I want to challenge us to really examine, how has God remembered you? How has God shown you that he has not forgotten? Usually every year we, for Thanksgiving, make a list of things that we're thankful for. I think one year when Vince was still here, it was like a hundred things. I tried that. That was pretty intense. It's like, man, I got to go deep here. But I, I, I think you can do some form of that if, if it helps. It could be a hundred things. It could be however many things you want it to be. Let's say at least ten things. How has God remembered you? Look at the ways that God has blessed you. Look at the things that God has provided for you. 
how has he remembered you? The second thing I think we can do is we have to remember God. Right? We, we have to make sure that God is the one who gets our gratitude. God is the one who gets our praise. God is the one in whom we place our joy. Like Hannah said, she said, my heart rejoices, not in Samuel, but in the Lord. In the Lord, my horn or my strength is lifted high. And so I think one of the ways we can do that is, you know, when you think about the things that God has blessed you with, how can you offer those things to God? How can you use those things in service to God? to build up God's kingdom. For Hannah, she gave her son to the work of the ministry. He lived in the temple as a priest, later became a prophet. He was the one that anointed King Saul. He was the one that anointed King David. Samuel played a pivotal role in the progression of God's will for his people. Because Hannah decided, I'm going to give him to God. How can you use what God has given you and give it back to him? How can, dev- how can you devote what you have received from God to build up his kingdom? So I, I think those are two simple things that we can do, remembering how God has remembered us, right? Thinking about all the things and all the ways that he's provided for us, and then taking those things and dedicating them to the Lord. Whatever it is, you can find a way to devote it to the Lord. And if you can't think of anything, you can ask somebody. You can get advice. I I think if we do these things, we really can have a heart of thanksgiving. We can give God the praise that he deserves. We can rejoice in the fact that God loves us, that he always remembers us. And we can remember that we serve a God who... Honestly, we, should, we really should be thankful for every day. Amen? Amen. Love you guys.